Uh, John wanted to uh, let you continue on some of the things that uh, you would uh, attempt to uh, get accomplished if elected alderman. Well, Blaney, number four on my list was the bus system in our city. I believe the bus system in our city could be much better. On a daily basis, I get 10 to 15 people that tell me how unsatisfied they are with the bus system, the hours they run, the whole nine yards. A lot of these people are what I consider working poor in our city. They're like me, a cab driver. They make 16000 a year or less. Okay, they work a full-time job. Uh, they depend on that bus to get to work. They depend on the bus to get home. But buses stop running about 9 o'clock here in our city. Okay, so basically a lot of the people that work in restaurants and stuff have to catch a cab, have to catch a ride with somebody. I believe that our bus system, we need smaller buses on our streets. There's no sense having those great big giant buses out there running around with one or two people on them. I hear the story from the bus drivers, oh, business is slow and this, that, and the other thing. Number one, if you have the right number of buses out here, the right size on our streets, People can depend on walking out to a bus stop every half hour, and there'll be a bus there. So you want to work with the Board of County Commissioners to get uh, better bus service in the city? Absolutely. Right? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Well, and are I, you talking about working with the county, or are you talking about creating your own no, system? Number, number one. Or privatization. I would, number one, I would take it to the county and say, look, we need buses seven days a week, 16 hours a day, 365 days a year, no ifs, ands, or buts. If they don't want to provide it, then... I would go out and find me a private contractor that wanted to put the right size buses on the streets of my city and take care of the people who elected me. That's the key right there. And, and, and you know, it, it's just too much. I'm not a politician. I'm not going to dance around and play games. I mean, if the people of the city find it in their heart to elect me, they're going to have somebody sit there and ask questions. Why not? You know, I hear, well, we can't do anything about the Historic District Commission. Why not? We can't do anything about the bus system that a whole lot of people are unhappy with. It takes three hours to get from Tanny Village to FSK Mall. A lot of 80-year-old people don't know whether to live three hours to get to FSK Mall. <laughs> and, that's, and, and that sounds kind of stupid, but it's true. Well, in the heat, you got a real, real concern because older people shouldn't be out in the heat anyhow. Absolutely. Oh, in the cold, the same difference. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm looking at, you know, the city property taxes. I had a gentleman who has two uh, Purple Hearts. Ex-military, was working down in Rockville somewhere. His boss closed the company up. He found that the boss stole all the money, uh, his retirement and everything. He lives up off of 7th Street in a house that was appraised at like $500,000 three years ago or something like that. His property taxes are tremendous, okay? But he couldn't sell his house today for 200000 He can't appeal of his assessment. And so this is what I'm saying. And, you know, we, we, we ought to see something about maybe every two years redoing the, recess, you know, the assessments. You can home. appeal your assessment every year. Okay, well, basically then we need to do something because I'm getting a lot of people come back to me saying, John, the property taxes are killing us. Well, the question would be, and I think Anita, which is a good one, uh, you know, when they send out the property tax bill, mm -hmm. maybe they need to send out the form that you fill out to appeal in uh, well, remember, that's so. the appeal, but we're talking about the, you and I both yeah. did the review of the assessment. It's well, called the one year. that you can do every year. But, I mean, once a year, when they send out, you know, they send out every other form. You right. Know, you never thought about that. Well, sure. Why not? Out, a good idea. They could send that form out and say, if you don't feel sure. your property is being assessed, you can uh, ask for a petition for it's review. It's petition for review, I think it's called. And, but uh, it's, it's, it turns out to be the same thing. The other thing, this person that you might, uh, I don't know what this person's income is, but in the state of Maryland, if you make less than thirty grand, all you have to do is fill out a very simple form. And uh, you'll be able to get your property taxes reduced to virtually nothing. Okay, that's great. And it's Maryland. Uh, just go down to the assessment office. And maybe you could take him down for a flat fee down right. to the assessment office and have him check it out. All right, got about for four more minutes. What else you got All on right. John? One reason I really want I'm taking a close look at the city budget and everything else is because something that's very close to my heart is the Frederick Rescue Mission. I've done lots of volunteer time. I've probably done 3,000 hours of volunteer time there over the last five or six years. I'm very active with a lot of different programs they have there, working with the guys in recovery and everything else. Uh, in the year 2000, the Frederick Rescue Mission was told by the city of Frederick, we can no longer pick up your trash. Okay? Now think about this for a minute. Why? The Frederick, they never gave them a reason. They went back to them three or four times in the last few years, and they still say no. My deal is... 
Here is the Frederick Rescue Mission. They feed 1,100 people a week, two meals a, a day, breakfast and lunch. They give out over 200 food boxes a week. They're very active in helping people in many different ways in our community. And they have to pay $10,000 a year for trash pickup. Now, my probably question... Probably they wouldn't be able to pick business. up free. Yeah. But, see, the thing is, they're probably not a business. Huh? They're not a business. Well, well but it's considered, considered commercial, probably, under sanitation by. laws and all that. Well, what do you think about annexations, John? What do you think about the annexations? Oh, no. In the oh, no. Part? no. Not until we get the budget in line. We, get, we need five new aldermen. We need to get the budget in line. We need to make sure the inner structure is big enough and is there mm -hmm. to handle annexation. Uh, why, if they can't give the Frederick Rescue Mission trash pickup, what makes you think they, we could build 200, 300 more houses and they'd have trash pickup for the houses? Or, you know, get somebody else in our city. Okay, well, what, what do you think about um, a parking? People, I mean, one of the th concerns out here on the West End is that people are parking all over their yards, their tractors and trailers and their co three cars in the backyard. We think there needs to be some, some regulation. Technically, in the city of Frederick, each property owner can have undercover two untagged vehicles on every property. Now, wouldn't the city look really nice if everybody had two abandoned cars undercover on their property? Well, okay, number one, I think that going back to the very first statement I made about giving the police what they need to do the job, we can eliminate a lot of those cars you're talking about out on the other end of town. A lot of them sitting around with no tags. Mm -hmm. People are driving cars on the west end of ta town with no tags. And I'm talking, you know, it's ridiculous. And whoever owns that property, you should say, okay, you're going to have X amount of cars per house. And if they got 10 cars sitting here, you got a problem. Yeah, okay. because the so house wasn't designed for 10 cars. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, I will say one thing that... In today's economy, when you build a million-dollar house and you have uh, three kids in the house, all teenagers, and they're all driving a car, and mom and dad's driving a car, you can see up to five cars in a house mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in today's economy. But I'm going to tell you what, if we had an adequate bus system that ran really good... I think a lot of people would forego the cars. Yeah, you the mom have. and dad would, have, would have to take the bus and the yeah. kids would have the cars. <laughs> All right, got about uh, 30 seconds to tell us why you should be uh, elected or tell those that are listening why they should uh, vote for you. Okay, number one, I got three things. I'm going to ask everybody in the city to pray for me. Number two, reason you should vote for me is because you will know you will always have somebody at City Hall I don't care whether you vote for me or you don't vote for me. I'm still going to represent you. I don't care about party. Okay, I'm about taking care of the people of this city. And, you know, I've had people come up to me and offer me campaign contributions. And I told them, no, I'm going to pay for this campaign out of my pocket. And I'm not going to spend a lot of money. I'm going to spend four or five grand. And if you really want to support me financially, write a check to the Frederick Rescue Mission so they could have more money to provide for the needs of the people in the city who need it. And that's where I'm coming from. All right. you have a website? I have a jwshoop01 at comcast.com. That's my email address. And All I got right. A, that, uh, wraps up the, that wraps it up.